Hi, this is D, Last Day's Messenger. I wanted to get back and finish up part two of the 144,000. The 144,000 is um, from the Book of Revelation, and it has been on my heart for quite a few years to to, uh, to understand, you know, what what does it mean? What who are they, and and what's going on? Um, uh, so, I have recently uh, received a confirmation uh, from a few of the um, Bible instructors. Um, uh, the first time I saw one on this particular conclusion of who the 144,000 are is from a well-known um, watchman on the wall, and I, I just I couldn't see it. I didn't understand it, and that was like probably a year ago or so. And it's uh, where it's still been on my heart. I've been pressing in on the Lord to, to try to get the truth and discernment uh, about this and more understanding. So I am not going to continue with standinfaith.org. Uh, this one comes from, these, these are highlights with scripture taken, uh, specifically answering the question. So we can come to this conclusion because of the scripture. And I'm basing this on the fact that I did get confirmation by not just one, but more than one. It has been a couple. Uh, actually, it's been more than two. It's probably been three or four that are saying, the exact same thing. So I've been praying to find out if what I've been watching on YouTube is is accurate. Second Corinthians thirteen one says, "So um, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses a word shall be established." So um, if you would like to find out more about who the hundred and forty four thousand are, if you if you've been like me and you're studying Scripture, and right now is the time where you you want to find out what this is. The meaning of it is, um, I can unlock some things for you because I have the answers according to uh, Bible scripture. So let's begin. We have the understanding that this is the highlights that I'm taking are notes from Robert Breaker. He's a Bible instructor, very well known on YouTube. He has talked about the 144,000. Uh, also, another uh, watchman on the wall has talked about the 144,000 and a few others. So I've been taking notes and praying for answers. And uh, according to this, it, it all lines up. So let's let's begin. If you have your Bibles, uh, let's open up to Revelation chapter number 7. And if you want to, it's a good time to, if you want to grab a pen and some paper, we can, uh, I can help you with, uh, with understanding that I finally have after quite a few number of years that I didn't understand who, who they are and how important are they. So we have here Revelation chapter 7 talks about that there will be 12 tribes, um, 12,000 from each tribe um, from Israel. So basically I don't want to spend a lot of time reading it where you can do that too, but I did want to just go over it and say just read chapter 7 after these things. I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. Chap verse 2, I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. So we have to write these things down, what's going on. Um, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So that's a number number one clue is angels were given um, um, a permission to hurt the earth and sea. So this is something that is going to happen at that time. So I'm guessing that it's a pretty good, I, you know, I have a pretty good idea that it is the time of the tribulation. So the angel says, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So that's the first thing, okay? Uh, I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Okay, so that's important. So it mentions the tribe of Judah, 12,000, Reuben, 12,000, Gad, 12,000, Asher, 12,000, 12,000 from Nephilim, 12,000 from Manasseh, Simeon, 12,000, Levi, 12,000, Issachar, 
the tribe of Zabulon, and the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. And it says again, uh, Benjamin were sealed 12,000. So the first thing that we write down is understanding that it is from my notes here that I'm going to have you look at. So you can have a quick have a quick look at what I did. Um, the first verse in scripture that we find out about them is the Revelation chapter 7, which I just read. And I wrote down, so Israel, and they are Jewish. Okay, 12 from the 12,000. This is who they are. A uh, second thing, uh, right here, the second place is Revelation chapter 14. And even I've watched some, and I've listened to some, that even want to say, that Revelation chapter 14 is talking about a different set. So let's look at the um, things I wrote down here. So we have that they are virgins. They are pure first fruits. We get to find out what that means exactly. And I wrote down that I'm led to believe that the rapture happens and then they are sealed. Going by the scripture. You can read it yourself. Um... Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 14. Okay, so then you can see what I'm talking about. So over here. So Revelation chapter 14. And I looked and lo, a lamb. That's Jesus, right? Obviously stood on the Mount, on the Mount Zion with him, 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. I heard a voice from heaven. As the voice of many waters, as the voice of a great thunder, I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Okay, so that's indicate indicative of uh, where they are. So it says they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne. So they're in heaven. Before the four beasts, the elders, and no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Now, I, I highlighted uh, verse 4 because it's very important. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. They are pure, in other words, obviously. We know what the word virgins mean. It means that they are pure. These are they which, the, which follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to, to the Lamb. So we have to understand what it, what it means about being first fruits. I'll get back to that. Uh, five in the mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault. So these are key factors right here. In their mouth was found no guile. Um, they didn't deceive anyone ever, and they are without fault. They are blameless and sinless before the throne of God. Let's go back here to the, my, my notes. And what did I write down here? Um, no guile found, and they're faultless and, and blameless. They follow the Lamb wherever He goes. So let's take a quick look at what do I have written down here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I think I highlighted everything in order. I hope I did. Oh, I think I started with Jeremiah. So let's just... It's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 20. It's probably the next one. First Corinthians chapter 15, 20 says, First Corinthians 15, 20, But now is Christ risen from the dead, and he becomes the first fruits of them that slept. It doesn't even say first fruit. It says first fruits of them that slept. So that's confirmation right there that we're looking at Jesus Christ as being the first fruits. So that's what I wanted you to see there. In identifying the 144,000, um, they have these same attributes, okay? Isaiah chapter 53, 1 through 8 is the prophecy of Jesus Christ. Uh, then I, the, what the most important thing is that you need to understand is Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. This is going to make sense because it is the explanation that the babies were killed, and I, I, I get it now. Um, I've read it, and I've reread it. Uh, I've got, gone over it, but when this Bible instructor was matching it all up, it really made a lot of sense. 
So Matthew chapter 2. Here we are in Matthew chapter 2. And we want to look at chapter, I'm sorry, verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child, referring to Jesus, and his mother, Mary, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Uh, this is all about it, 13, 14, 15, 16 confirms. That's what King Herod did when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, the three wise men. Uh, he was very angry and sent forth, slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. This is it. This is the answer. This is key in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. So that's something I highlighted for that reason. Uh, that's going to help me remember. And the other important thing that ties it together now is going into the Old Testament, looking at Jeremiah 31, 15, and 16, which I wouldn't have known to do. So this is talking about um, Rachel weeping. Jeremiah chapter 31 speaks of it in verse 15 and 16. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Thus says the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded. Saith the Lord, they shall come again from the land of the enemy. That's the answer that I never had before. I didn't see that before. They shall come again. There is hope in thine end, says the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. So that's Jeremiah 31, uh, 15, 16, 17. That's what God is saying. That the children will come again. Okay, so this is what we've learned so far. And according to scripture, God is going to bring these babies back to life at the time just after the rapture and the start of the tribulation. So I'm, I might even just continue on if I can find out more information of what, of what they're going to be doing exactly at the time of tribulation. Okay, so thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Be blessed.